Imagine this, you're boarding a plane in New York, you buckle up, the engines roar, and 18 hours later, you step out in Sydney, Australia. No layovers, no refueling, just one continuous flight across 12,000 kilometers of ocean, sky, and time zones. That's not a dream anymore, it's a goal China is actively chasing. To put it in perspective, this kind of range is like flying across the Atlantic Ocean, twice, without stopping. That's how far and fast this new Chinese jet aims to go. And here's the wild part. The jet isn't being built by Boeing or Airbus, the global giants we're used to. It's being built in China by a country that's rapidly rewriting the rules of aviation. This challenge isn't just about building a bigger fuel tank. Long-haul flight like this pushes the limits of aerodynamics, fuel efficiency, engine performance, and material science. A jet like this needs to be light enough to soar, strong enough to last, and smart enough to squeeze every ounce of energy from every drop of fuel. We're talking about engines that burn 20% less fuel, materials stronger than steel, but lighter than aluminum, and AI-designed wings that slice through air like a blade. If this jet succeeds, it could make today's airliners look like relics of a slower, older world, and flip the global aviation industry on its head. But how did China leap so far ahead? While the world was watching Boeing and Airbus battle for dominance in the skies, China was quietly building its own aviation empire, brick by brick, engine by engine. It started with Comac, China's state-owned aircraft manufacturer. For years, people doubted them. The world shrugged off their early efforts as copycats or slow-moving experiments. But behind the scenes, China was laying the groundwork for something much bigger. In 2017, Comac introduced the C919, China's first homegrown passenger jet built to compete with Boeing's 737 and Airbus's A320. At first glance, it looked ordinary, but its true importance wasn't in what it was. It was what it represented, independence from Western aircraft makers. China wasn't just making planes. It was investing in hypersonic flight research, engine design, and aerospace-grade materials, things that take decades to master. The government poured in over $300 billion in aviation R&D, building research centers, wind tunnels, and full-scale test labs. Meanwhile, in the West, things were slowing down. Boeing was caught in a crisis after the 737 MAX disasters, with trust and innovation both in freefall. Airbus stayed ahead, but even they were playing it safe, refining old models instead of taking big leaps. China, in contrast, was thinking long-term, like building a skyscraper while others argue about elevator buttons. And now, that quiet revolution is starting to roar. But what exactly makes this new jet so special? This jet isn't just about flying farther, it's about breaking the physical limits that have held aviation back for decades. Let's start with the engine. Traditional jet engines waste a lot of fuel, especially on ultra-long routes. But China's engineers are rolling out next-generation turbofan engines, ones that are smarter, cooler, and more efficient. They're designed to cut fuel burn by over 20%, which means the jet can fly farther without adding weight from extra fuel. Think of it like a car that suddenly gets double the miles per gallon, but still goes just as fast. Now, what about the body? Most airplanes today are built with aluminum. It's strong and light, but not strong or light enough for what China's planning. Instead, this jet will use composite alloys, advanced materials made from carbon fiber and special polymers. They're lighter than aluminum and tougher than steel. That means less fuel needed to lift the plane, and a stronger frame that can handle long flights without strain. Then there's the shape of the plane itself. China is using AI-driven design software to sculpt the wings and body for maximum efficiency. These aren't just guesses. They're backed by wind tunnel tests that simulate real-world flying conditions. The result? Aerodynamics so smooth the plane practically slices through the air, reducing drag and saving even more energy. Put it all together, and you have a flying machine that doesn't just challenge physics. It outsmarts it. But this isn't just a technical victory. The real battle is about power, influence, and who controls the skies. This jet isn't just a marvel of engineering. It's a power move. Because in today's world, controlling the skies means controlling the future. Think about it. If China can build the world's most advanced long-haul jet, it doesn't just sell planes. It sets the rules. It decides who gets the best prices, who gets access to spare parts, and who gets left behind. This is exactly what happened with 5G technology. China's Huawei outpaced the West, and suddenly countries around the world were dependent on Chinese tech. Now imagine that same scenario, but with airplanes. And it's not just about trade. It's about global influence. 
China's Belt and Road Initiative already stretches across Asia, Africa, and Europe. Imagine a Belt and Road 2.0 comma, where Chinese-made jets are part of the package. Need a new airport? China builds it. Need cheap aircraft? China supplies them, with strings attached. It's like a game of chess, and while Western powers are stuck arguing over rules, China is already three moves ahead. Airplanes become more than machines. They become diplomatic tools. A country that buys Chinese jets might also rely on China for training, support, and financing, locking them into long-term partnerships. And the U.S.? Europe? They risk being pushed out of key markets, especially in developing regions hungry for cheaper, longer-range travel. So while this may look like an aviation story, it's really about global strategy. And China's playing to win. But what does this mean for the airlines already flying today? If China's jet really delivers flying farther, cheaper, and faster, it won't just hurt Boeing or Airbus. It could wreck entire airline business models. Take the traditional hub-and-spoke system. That's how big airlines like Delta, Lufthansa, or Emirates operate. Instead of flying directly, passengers are routed through major hubs, like Atlanta, Frankfurt, or Dubai, before reaching their final destination. It's not efficient, but it works because no current plane can fly every route nonstop. But what if they could? Let's say a new Chinese jet starts flying London to Perth, a brutal 14,000-kilometer route, nonstop. No layovers in Singapore or Doha. Suddenly, passengers stop choosing airlines that make them change planes. That one route could wipe out connecting traffic, draining profits from airlines that rely on those hubs to survive. Now think bigger. If China sells hundreds of these jets to smaller or budget airlines, they'll leapfrog legacy carriers. Passengers would rather take a cheaper, faster direct flight than deal with layovers, delays, and extra fees. And it's not just about people. It's about cargo, too. Right now, shipping companies like FedEx and DHL depend on stopover hubs to move goods between continents. But if a Chinese freight carrier can fly directly from Shenzhen to Sao Paulo in one shot, that's faster delivery and fewer middlemen. That could crush traditional logistics giants. In short, this one jet has the power to reshape global air travel, bankrupt outdated carriers, and flip the airline industry upside down. But there's still one big question. Can China actually pull it off? As impressive as this jet sounds, it's not guaranteed to take over the skies. In fact, there are three massive obstacles that could ground China's dream before it even takes off. First, certification. To fly internationally, any aircraft needs approval from aviation authorities like the FAA in the United States or ESA in Europe. These groups check everything, safety systems, flight tests, emergency protocols. And let's be real, Western regulators might not be eager to hand over approval to a jet built by a geopolitical rival. Second, trust. Even if the jet passes every safety test, there's the human factor, passenger confidence. Would you feel safe flying on a brand new aircraft built by a company with no decades-long track record? Airlines know this matters. One serious incident, even if it's minor, could spark global fear and kill demand overnight. And then there's America's wildcard SpaceX. Elon Musk isn't sitting still. His team is working on point-to-point -point rockets that could fly you from New York to Tokyo in under an hour. Sure, it sounds futuristic, but so did electric cars a decade ago. If SpaceX cracks this technology first, China's ultra-long-range jet might feel old before it even launches. So yes, China has the vision, the tech, and the money, but it's still facing a storm of political, emotional, and competitive headwinds. Still, if it survives the turbulence, what could the world look like in just 10 years? Scene 6, the year 2035. Fast forward to the year 2035. Imagine this. 40% of long-haul flights are no longer operated by Boeing or Airbus, but by Chinese-made jets. The skies look different, the rules have changed, and the balance of power tilted. In this new world, Beijing doesn't just make the planes. It controls the economics behind them. With deep government subsidies, China can afford to sell tickets at lower prices, sometimes even below cost, just to squeeze out the competition. That means airlines that buy Chinese jets can offer cheaper flights. Those that don't, they'll struggle to survive. Now zoom into airport control towers. You hear something different. Air traffic controllers and pilots don't just speak English anymore. They're learning Mandarin. Why? Because many global airports are servicing fleets made in China, staffed by Chinese-trained crews running on Chinese systems. It's not required by law, but in aviation, the supplier often sets the standard. Culturally, even passenger habits start shifting. Frequent flyers in Africa, Southeast Asia, and South America no longer dream of flying on a Boeing Dreamliner. 
They want the new Sky Dragon or whatever flashy name China gives its aircraft. And from a geopolitical view, China is now more than a superpower on the ground. It's a superpower in the sky, moving people, goods, and influence around the globe at will. 2035 might sound far off, but in aviation, that's just one development cycle away. And with the speed China is moving, it could all come sooner than anyone expects. So here we are. What started as a bold idea, a jet that can fly 12,000 kilometers nonstop, is now a real challenge to the status quo. China isn't just building planes. It's building a future where it dominates the skies, controls the routes, and rewrites the rules of global travel. This isn't just about engineering. It's about power, pride, and positioning. The U.S. led the aviation world for a century. Europe held its ground with Airbus, but now China wants in, and it's not knocking. It's breaking the door down. Will it succeed? Or will safety concerns, regulatory walls, and rising competition clip its wings before takeoff? One thing's clear, the sky is no longer the limit. China is playing for keeps, and the rest of the world is either catching up or getting left behind. What do you think? Would you fly on a Chinese-made jet that skips layovers and costs less? Or would you wait to see if it really holds up? Drop your take in the comments. And if you want a deep dive on Comac's secret space plane project, or how China's aviation strategy ties into its military rise, hit that subscribe button. We're just getting started.